Good afternoon. Hi, I'm State Senator Liz Krueger. It's October 21st, and we're having the third session of our three-day Senior Resource Fair virtually. And yesterday we had a fabulous group of presentations by people who were talking about pets as family. And today we're going to continue with another fabulous group of presenters on arts, continuing education and technology for older New Yorkers. All right, before we get into the show, I of course always wanna welcome everyone who's watching today and to point out that you might be on Zoom or Facebook, or you could just be calling in on phone. If you're on Zoom or Facebook, you have the option of adding closed captioning so that you can read what's being said as text on your screen. If you're on Zoom, click on live transcript in the meeting controls to start viewing your closed captioning. And if you're on Facebook Live, you will see a settings button in the bottom right hand corner of the video. Click CC to start closed captioning. Just a few announcements before we get into the substance of today. The FDA authorized a booster shot of the Moderna vaccine for individuals aged 65 or older, individuals aged 18 to 64 who have an underlying medical condition putting them at higher risk of illness due to COVID, and individuals 18 to 64 in high risk occupations and institutions like working in a healthcare facility or a nursing home. The FDA authorized all individuals age 18 plus who received a Johnson and Johnson vaccination to receive a booster shot two months after the first dose of J&J. &J. The, the FDA also authorized individuals to receive a different brand of vaccine for their booster if they wish. However, both of these policies need to be voted on by the CDC as well which may happen as early as today, and they could make modifications. So don't think you can run out to get the, these third shots today. Just wait a few more days. We'll be making more announcements. Once the CDC approves, it takes them a couple of days to um, update providers in the system. So check the vaccine website, check my emails because we always try to keep you up to date but very soon these are all going to be options that you will have available to you and of course we want to make sure that everybody's getting a flu shot this time of year also because the last thing you want to have to deal with is covid and the flu together in some way so remind everybody you know we're not just talking one vaccine right now we're talking about two illnesses two vaccines, get your flu shot and your third booster shot for COVID. And you can call 311 to find out where the nearest locations would be for you. And you can text the word flu. If you use the kind of smartphone where you text, just text 877-877 with the word flu. And they'll get back to you with information about your nearest site. And you can also, of course, use the New York City COVID and flu vaccine finder online, vaccinefinder.nyc.gov. And that's gonna pop up in your chat. So don't feel like you have to write it down so fast. So now we're gonna to move to this afternoon's presentation, Arts Continuing Education and Technology for Older New Yorkers. I want to start off by thanking the following groups for coordinating with my staff to put this all together. Dorot, Quest, Older Adult Technology Services, the Museum of Modern Art, and the Theater Development Fund, who have provided the wonderful presenters you're going to hear from. You should know that this event is being recorded. Everyone who RSVP'd for this event will receive an email of a link to the video a couple of days after the session. You're also going to be able to find this on my website if you somehow have heard about it but weren't watching and didn't RSVP because people tell their friends. All right, today we're having, again, the final session for this year. 
For 14 years, we held a wonderful in-person fair at Temple Emmanuel, showcasing over 100 organizations providing services for older New Yorkers and their caregivers. And of course, COVID has prevented us from meeting in person, but it's still great to be able to use technology to connect virtually. Today's session, again, focusing on arts continuing ed and technology um, to help you connect online. To get more information about the presenters, their organizations, programs, please go to the Senior Resource Fair webpage at my website. So Liz Kruger, all one word, dot com slash SRF slash. This is senior SRS, excuse me, SRF is Senior Resource Fair. If you just go to my webpage, you'll find the Senior Resource Fair page. First, we will hear from Lorraine Novak, Director of Connect Through Tech Programs at DeRote. Lorraine will talk about the program, including University Without Walls, On-Site at Home, and their Technology Assistance Programs. Next, we're going to hear from Nan McNamara, who is a Council Member and Chair of the Quest Membership Committee, part of a continuing education program for older adults at City College. Following Nan, Marco DiGirolamo, who is the New York Program Manager at Older Adults Technology Services, also known as OATS, will share their programs offered to older adults, including advocacy initiatives and technology services. Then we will hear from Lara Schweller, the Associate Educator for Community and Access Programs at the Museum of Modern Art. And our final presenter will be Gladys Perez Mojica, the Community Relations Manager at the Theater Development Fund. And Gladys will share information about older adults and general programming to get access to um, theater events. So with that, we're going to start with Lorraine Novak. Hi, Lorraine. Good morning and thank you, Senator. Thank you so much for having us here. Um, I'm pleased to be able to talk to everyone today about um, our wonderful programs. I'm going to share my screen in just a moment. Oh, here we go. I think everyone can see that, yes? Yes. Okay, so we will start with um, University Without Walls. Um, the Senator is correct, you know, we are all doing program uh, via technology these days, very little opportunity to all be together in person. One of the things that makes University Without Walls such a unique program is that it's designed exclusively for telephone users. We've been running this program for over 30 years. Um, we are still able to provide visuals because we send materials to people's homes. Um, actually, one of our partners is here today, uh, the, the wonderful MoMA. Um, we keep our programs very small. So these are intimate conversation groups of no more than 15 people, everybody over the age of 60, um, all facilitated by enthusiastic and knowledgeable facilitators. Um, we have a wide range of topics, everything from museums to news and politics to music to health and wellness, including some live exercise. Uh, we have conversation groups where people get together just to talk about a topic that they really enjoy. Um, and of course, all of these wonderful programs are free. Um, to give you some examples, uh, tomorrow we'll be hosting um, a seated Qigong class at 10 o'clock. Uh, we will have a film discussion group called The Corner of Casablanca and Sunset at 11. There'll be a novel discussion um, focused on of women and salt, um, followed by the pearls of wisdom and elder African American story troop telling uh, storytelling troop, um, mostly of women, all sharing very uh, poignant stories from their own lives, small moments that have a big impact. Um, so we would be very pleased to have you join us um, and share in any of those uh, opportunities or the ones that are coming up over the next couple of weeks there'll be a link into the chat. Now we do also have a large number of programs taking place over Zoom. Uh, we used to welcome people into our beautiful auditorium on West 85th Street. 
like many other organizations, a lot of our uh, live programming has switched from live in our building to live on Zoom. Um, all of these programs are also designed for adults over the age of 60, encouraging health and wellness, creating social connection, and providing opportunities for dynamic learning, creative expression, and enrichment. If um, you remember nothing else from these presentations today, we'd like you to remember uh, that there is a new calendar each week, um, which will showcase the 20 or 25 programs that we sell, that we share, sorry, not sell, none of these programs have a cost associated with them. Um, our biggest focus is on creating a sense of community. It's what people enjoy about coming back over and over and over again, and all programs are free. Um, we also have a, um, a wide variety of programs here as well. Um, we, uh, in our movement classes, offer things like chair yoga, qigong, postural therapy, um, a dance class, again, all geared towards people in their 60s and over. We also have enrichment programs, um, which are run by experts in their fields, um, things that focus just on meditation or music appreciation or our monthly book discussions. We also offer opportunities for a lot of artistic and creative expression. You can see some folks here um, sharing some of the wonderful art that they're able to make at home, but within this group community. Um, we've done some singing together for our Great American Songbook Program. We have art and writing classes. Um, the origami is some of what you're seeing here. We've done guided autobiography, a drawing program, watercolor painting, you name it. Um, also photography workshops, uh, Zoom movie making, um, and storytelling groups like the one I mentioned earlier for University Without Walls are wonderful pearls of wisdom. Um, our schedule offers a lot of opportunities for people to come together, not only in large groups, but in very small groups as well for more intimate and personal conversation. Um, we host a, a small group for current events. Um, there is a sports group. There is our uh, weekly roses and thorns discussion, and also uh, a group specific for LGBTQ elders. We're very proud of the lecture series that we offer through this program. Um, we have partners such as Bard College, the New York Historical Society, the Central Park Conservancy. Um, so there's a wide variety of programs um, coming through in that way as well. Through all of these programs, um, we also offer um, uh, information on uh, legacy and life planning. We're able to connect people to um, our social workers for additional support. Again, all free of charge. Lastly, um, I know we have Oates with us today who's going to talk um, about all of their amazing programming. Um, DeRote does have a small uh, faction where we are providing one-on-one -on -one um, technology coaching. You're able to speak with someone from our department. We will get all the information about your computer and what it is that you're learning, to, looking to learn. And we would be able to set you up with someone who can teach you one-on-one um, -on, -one on your particular device at your pace, um, how to go through um, with all of that learning. So thank you so much for inviting us to come and speak today. Thank you very much, Lorraine. A lot of exciting things that you can do right from your home and your phone. That's great. Next, I'm going to be presenting Nan McNamara um, from Quest, who's going to be sharing um, about their continuing education programs. Hi, Nan. Hi. Can you? Yes, you can see me. Thank you very much. Um, many of us, of course, retired and semi-retired seniors have taken advantage of having a bit more flexible time to take courses. And in New York, there are virtually endless opportunities to do so. And Quest Lifelong Learning provides one of those many opportunities to take courses. But Quest is a little different. We are a community of about 250 senior men and women who are curious. Sometimes we say intellectually curious, but just curious is enough and who love to learn. One doesn't sign up for a class or a course at Quest. One joins the organization, you join Quest. All of the classes that we teach 
um, our proposed planned session after session and each session of each course is presented, taught or led by a Quest member. After our year, as with the rest of the world, of course, um, meeting remotely, thanks to our wonderfully technically adept members, we are moving back to in-person, which has been the basic nature and premise of Quest. We meet at 25 Broadway near Bowling Green. We offer about three dozen classes each term, fall and spring, and then in the summer, we meet two mornings a week and present repeats of some of the particularly interesting individual presentations from the past year. Our classes meet Monday through Thursday, morning classes are 1030 to noon and afternoon classes 1 to 230. Usually there are two different classes at each of those sessions. Now, in addition to not signing up for, for a course, you don't have to register ever for a specific class on a specific day, nor do we take attendance. If you're a member, you can come in and you may attend any session of any class in which you are interested with very few exceptions. Our acting workshop, which does play readings, obviously casts people in the part and can't uh, um, accommodate extra people for whom there are no roles. But the real dilemma is often not that you can't participate in a class, but that you look at the schedule for the following week. And we send out a little um, description of what's being taught in each class that week and by which presenter. And more often than not, you find you're wanting to attend two classes that meet simultaneously. In addition to the classes themselves, all of the other work at Quest is done by our members. We propose classes, of course, but then we schedule them, work out the schedule. We have great tech support people. Most of our presenters use PowerPoint or videos of, of one kind or another. We have more than a dozen committees, fairly obvious committees. We have an 11 member council and very important, we have volunteers who make coffee in our lunchroom and before class in the morning. Now the range of courses that we offer at Quest is pretty broad. This fall, some of our classes are classic rock, the African continent, the acting uh, workshop I mentioned, reading the rabbis, the fabulous 50s, movers and shakers, foreign affairs, mythology, contemporary opera, reading black lives, Shakespeare, race relations in American political thought, fascinating nonfiction, artists in their work, science, uh, artists and their work, science and, I'm sorry, science and scientists, and 17 additional classes, but I'll quit here while I'm still possibly ahead. Most of our members attend classes a couple times a week or sometimes even more frequently. In addition to the classes, however, Quest also has regular guest speakers, publishes a journal of our members' fiction, essays, poetry, and art. We organize museum tours, and we have, although it is for obvious reasons on hiatus at the moment, a travel program. Yesterday, we had a speaker, a children's book author, Adam Gidwitz, who was absolutely fantastic. And I just walked out of that session, came home and ordered one of his books for my grandchildren. Quest is also open to other ideas for learning or interesting experiences proposed by our members. A couple of years ago, one of our members, one of our new members said he was really interested in the ethnic restaurants in New York, particularly the slightly smaller but wonderful ethnic restaurants in the outer boroughs and some even in New Jersey. And could he um, propose visits to some of them for a dozen or so members just by signing up? Now, I wasn't there for this discussion, but I am told the reaction by members was, oh, nobody's going to want to do that. Well, he 
picked a restaurant, described it, picked a date and put a sign up sheet for a dozen people on the bulletin board. Not only did that sign up sheet sit blank for days on end, but within a couple of days, it was totally filled up. And if you want to go on one of these dinners, which he plans every month or so, you have to catch that sign up sheet on the day it goes up on the bulletin board or there's not going to be any more room. And we're open to all kinds of ideas like this and whatever you might come up with. Um, Quest is, of course, not just distinguished, or maybe it's already obvious, by the opportunities it provides to learn many different subjects in many different ways, including teaching. But we function very much as a community in which we work together and we get to know each other, to make friends, and sometimes, it happens fairly regularly, to encounter old friends with whom we've lost touch. The process to join Quest is to schedule a visit, observe a quest or two, a class or two, and talk with some members about your questions, your interests, and how you might want to become involved with Quest. We do have dues. They're $275 each term. More information about Quest, of course, can be find, found on our website, questlifelong.org, including the number to call to arrange a visit to talk with a member and we very much look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you, Nan. That sounds very exciting. I wish I had enough time in my schedule, but I'm probably not eligible for it yet. Um, so thank you so much. Our next presenter is Marco DiGirolamo. I swore I was going to get it right, who is with OATS and is going to talk about their programs for older adults. Hi, Marco. Hi, Senator. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, so as the Senator mentioned, my name is Marco DiGirolamo. I am the program, the New York State Program Manager for Older Adult Technology Services, Senior Planet from, old, um, from AARP. I will be sharing a quick presentation, so just give me one moment. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. All right. So as mentioned, um, I am from Older Adult Technology Services, Senior Planet from AARP. I'm gonna give you a little bit of an introduction to Senior Planet. Our um, Senior Planet's um, tagline is aging with attitude. We as an organization really push um, to go against the grain of what um, unfortunately is the stereotypical older adult in society's eyes and really pushing the boundaries to empower older adults to know that they're more than just being, uh, age is more than just a number and that no matter what your age is, you can continue doing anything you would like. Um, Senior Planet has a training model that is designed with and for older adults. We offer one-off technology lectures on drones, on how to get started on Instagram. We have full-fledged five and 10 week courses as well as one-on-one -on -one tech help where an individual can make an appointment and one of our staff members will assist them. Prior to the pandemic, we were fully in person where we had a center in the Chelsea area. Now that we have been um, transitioned to online, all of our programming and services are virtual via Zoom. All of our curriculum is created to be used on mainstream devices and applications. So iPhone, Samsung phones, laptops, PCs, those devices, if you have one and you're interested in learning more about how to use that device, Senior Planet is the, um, is the place to go and learn more about that. And then part of our model is really putting an emphasis on partnership. And no matter what program you attend in, um, attend for Senior Planet, there's always this sense of camaraderie. It's a, it's a group experience, not just you coming and learning to you know, learn for yourself, but as a group, you will learn and move throughout the process of the program. So I talked a little bit about Senior Planet now. What is OATS and Older Adult Technology Services? A lot of people get them inter um, confused sometimes. So Older Adult Technology Services from AARP is a social impact organization with the mission to harness technology to change the way we age. Um, we are, Older Adult Technology Services is the creator of Senior Planet and Aging Connected, 
um, Agent Connected is an initiative to bring 1 million older adults online by June 2022. So um, as that's quickly approaching, we're getting closer to that number, thankfully. We work with nonprofits, corporate partners, and government organizations to bring innovation solutions to the intersection of aging and technology. We have our seniorplanet.org website, which receives one over a million visitors each year. On our website, you can find um, original content geared to adults 60 and over. We have really great blog posts with really amazing contributors, many of whom are our actual members who are writing for us. Um, this is where you can also find all of our upcoming events, which range from learning very basic new tech to fitness and wellness, open discussion groups, we have a book club and many, many other great, amazing things that can all be done from the comfort of your home via your device. We currently have six location, mainstay locations, New York being one of them in our Chelsea area. We have a location in the North Country region of New York, San Antonio, Texas, Montgomery County, Maryland, Colorado, as well as Palo Alto, California. So if you have any friends in these areas that aren't New York City, please let them know. They can visit our website and they can um, access a plethora of our amazing programs across the country virtually. We have five impact areas, um, one of them being creative um, expression. We have social engagement, health and wellness, financial literacy, and advocacy. Now I am gonna go a little bit more into the creative expression impact area that we offer many different programs for. So for creative expression impact area, we offer discussion groups. One of those discussion groups is our creative creations court um, discussion group, which meets once a week. And that group was started as an in-person program where each week people would come to our center and talk about crafts that they created the week prior or throughout the week leading up to the meeting. And when we went remote, we decided that why not make it digital? Um, why not make it virtual? And that really opened the door to people across the country joining and really engaging and talking about their um, creative minds and putting their minds together to create different art projects, um, you know, from all different walks of life and all across um, from all different ends of the country. We offer a multitude of lectures that you can attend. We have a lecture on Google Photos, smartphone photography, um, how to get started on Canva, which is a website that really um, hones in on digital um, graphic design tools. We have a digital storytelling course, I mean, lecture that talks about um, taking a story or a poem and really translating it virtually and creating a really <clears throat> great piece of um, art that can translate and really relay the message that someone's trying to come or put across with their poem. We have a graphic design tools lecture that covers all gamuts of graphic design. So Photoshop, Canva, as I just mentioned, as well as many of the um, Google workspace um, applications like Google Docs, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, and those, and that um, sort of um, applications. We then also have a two full-fledged five-week courses, um, one called Digital Tools for Creative Expression, as well as Getting Creative with Canva. So I mentioned getting started with Canva as a lecture. That's a very one-hour brief introduction to Canva, whereas our Getting Creative with Canva really dives deep into creating a project from start to finish on the Canva platform. Um, all of our programs have been um, really successful with our, with our constituents, as well as with the part, um, our partners who we work with throughout New York City. So 93% um, of, of the participants who have gone through our programs are still using the technology six months after they've completed a program, which a program can be a lecture or a full-fledged five-week or 10-week course. 57% who took a financial security course report saving money as a result of taking our courses and really learning how to be safe with their finances. 
47% of participants in our health and wellness program, which is um, marketed as Team Senior Planet, um, report losing weight. And 53% say they are sleeping better, which who doesn't want to sleep better, especially during these trying times. And then a little bit about what we've been able to accomplish while we've been virtual. So since mid-March of 2020, when we had to close our doors and really um, transition to virtual, we have held over 4,000 virtual programs adapted from our in-person curriculum. And we've engaged over 200,000 individuals. From those 200,000, over 200,000 individuals, 44% of them said that they have attended a senior planet program before. So we were able to really maintain that momentum from in-person and bring those individuals to our online pro um, programming. Um, we have a 93 net promoter score across all of our programs. Um, a net promoter score that is considered excellent is anything over 60. So that 93 net promoter score really is something that we love to talk about because um, it's all a testament to the hard work that our team at Senior Planet and Older Adult Technology Services has done, as well as the gratitude and the um, the um, grace that our our participants have provide, given us um, over the last few years. And then here are some final numbers about our classes, um, our virtual classes at Senior Planet. 82% um, felt better equipped to find resources online. 86 felt more connected to the world around them, which during a very um, tumultuous time where people couldn't go out and you know easily see their family and friends, us being an outlet for them to become more connected is something that we really pride ourselves on. 78% um, felt more confident connecting with friends and family online. And then 81% um, of our participants felt less alone. So um, it's Senior Planet and Oats has done tremendous work to really bridge the digital divide across the um, United States, but especially during this time in um, during the pandemic, it's been something that has been life changing for many. And then some just key takeaways, you can meet us online at www.seniorplanet.org and you can find a multitude of resources like tech tip videos, articles, handouts and available information as well as COVID-19 resources. And that is it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Marco. That was terrific. It's amazing that you've reached 212,000 with your programs during this online. Um, talk about the ability to switch gears when you need to. And now we're going to hear from Laura Schweller, the Associate Educator for Community and Access Programs at the Museum of Modern Art. And she's going to talk to us about how they have been reaching out to people, um, to older New Yorkers, both on site and through virtual programs. Hi, how are you, Laura? Hi, I'm good. How are you today? Thank you so much for having us, Senator Kruger, and for putting together this wonderful fair. And welcome, everyone. It's so nice to meet you virtually. Uh, again, my name is Lara Schweller, and I work at the Museum of Modern Art in our education department. And I work on our uh, creative aging program, which is called Primetime. And Primetime is for New Yorkers who are 65 or older. And today I'll tell you a little bit about what we have coming up for our primetime program, but I'll also just share some information about the museum. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen to show you some images of the museum. Okay, so welcome to MoMA. Um, this is an image of our entrance at 11 West 53rd Street. And I would say, um, you know, it's interesting. I was talking to our director of visitor engagement who oversees the whole lobby and everyone who welcomes um, people into the museum. And I asked her, I said, if there was one thing I could communicate to all of the older adults who are joining this fair, what would that be? And she said, you know, I think what you should really share with people is that MoMA is safe it's a place to be inspired and we're excited to welcome people back. And I just thought that was great. And you know, it's interesting because 
MoMA is a particularly safe place right now. At the museum, we've never wanted anyone to touch anything. We're actually, we're trying to guard everyone from touching the artwork. So there's not a lot of touch points there. We've also really increased cleaning protocols and safety protocols. Um, the environment is always very controlled to protect the artwork. So it, it is a very safe place to visit. There are social distancing protocols in place. And I'll speak more about that later. Um, but we are open to the public and we're really excited to welcome you back. Uh, right now, we have three whole floors of our permanent collection open which features modern and contemporary art. So art from um, the 1880s up until the present day. We also have an exhibition of um, artwork by the artist Alexander Calder. We have a show called Automania, which features cars from over the year and takes a dive into the visual culture of cars as well, especially in the US. Uh, we have an exhibition of the artist Adam Pendleton's work. And then we have some upcoming exhibitions for the, for the year of the work of Sophie Tauber Arp, Joseph Yoakum, and Henri Matisse. This next image uh, features some uh, adults on a tour at the museum in front of a, a large black wooden um, sculpture by the artist Louise Nevelson. Um, and I mentioned our primetime program, this is an image of what a program might have looked like pre-COVID, uh, where we would meet in person and um, share space and have a rich conversation about art in galleries, or maybe make art together in the studio. While we've been um, managing through the pandemic, we've transitioned all of our programs so far into the virtual space. We have focused on partnerships with community organizations it's great to be here um, with my colleagues, Lorraine and Marco. We um, often will offer art courses through DeRote's platform, University Without Walls. I've had the pleasure of teaching many of those art enrichment programs. And this past year, we also partnered with Oats to offer a virtual art making workshop, which was lots of fun. And that was a six week program. Uh, Right now, we're offering all of our programs through partnership organizations. So again, those include organizations like DeRote or uh, Senior Planet with Oats. Um, we also work with Lenox Hill Neighborhood House, um, which is on the east side as well. So some of you might um, already be familiar with that space. And we are also planning our first in-person public program for older adults for this coming winter. So that will be a really fun day where we welcome in everyone for free and we provide you with some resources uh, that will just enrich your visit throughout the museum. So we'll give you prompts uh, for looking at artworks, some extra information about artworks, some guides for which artworks might be interesting to look at together and then some art supplies as well to either use in the museum or to take home for your enjoyment. And I believe that in the chat, um, yes, thank you, Brad. Brad has posted a link um, or will be posting a link where you can sign up for more information um, to learn more about uh, that upcoming program. And I'm having a, a technical issue. My PowerPoint slides are blank. I will stop my share and try to reshare my PowerPoint right now. I apologize for that. Okay, there we go. Going back. Um, so this is an image of two visitors at the museum standing in front in fabulous outfits um, next to a sign that says prime time. Um, and thank you in advance, Brad, for sharing that link in case people want to sign up to learn more about our upcoming public program. Now we also have programs for people of all ages. Um, and those are still happening virtually. And the goals of our programs are really to provide a space for people to explore art, create art, connect with each other, 
connect with people with like-minded interests and to share, share more of themselves and more of their creativity. You can always see upcoming programs, um, which are always free with registration on MoMA's calendar. And I'll just share that some of our upcoming programs include lectures led by artists on VIEW. Uh, these artists include Emery Douglas, whose work will be featured on the fourth floor, uh, Adam Pendleton and uh, Chitra Ganesh. And then we also have some really interesting interactive programs which are led by our education department. One is called Slow Looking and in an hour, um, everyone looks at one artwork and it's all about slowing down and approaching the artwork in new ways. So several different guest speakers come on throughout the program and guide you in different ways to, to view this one artwork. Another program we have coming up that you'll see on our calendar is our Close Looking program. And this is a program in which two emerging contemporary artists facilitate a conversation around an exhibition at the museum. And this next one will feature Shigeku Kubota's multimedia sculptures, which will be on view shortly on the fourth floor. Now back to um, this last slide, which is an image of the museum's entrance at 11 West 53rd Street. I thought it might be helpful just to share some logistical information about visiting the museum right now. So we are open seven days a week. Um, on Sundays through Fridays, we are open from 10.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And on Saturdays, we are open an extra hour and a half until 7 p.m. Timed tickets are still required and they can be purchased in advance online, but you can also purchase them on site at the museum. There is a discount, uh, a discounted ticket for people who are 65 or older. That ticket price is $18. Um, and for COVID safety reference, vaccines are required for anyone over the age of 12 and masks are also required, vaccinated or not, for anyone over the age of two. I'm excited to announce that we are going to restart our free Friday night. Um, this is called the Uniqlo Night for New York City. It will be the first Friday of each month from 4 to 7 p.m. You'll still need to reserve a time ticket in advance for this, and they will open up um, free tickets online about two weeks ahead of each date. So once a month, um, the first Friday of each month from 4 to 7 p.m., there will be free tickets. Um, but uh, even more exciting, um, I am able to offer everyone attending today a free annual pass to the museum. So I'll be putting the information in the chat when I'm done speaking, um, but I'm very excited to welcome you all back and I'll be providing you with a code to use to purchase the membership called the annual pass. The annual pass will provide you with free tickets for the year. Um, thank you and I'm really excited to, to see you all at the museum sometime soon, I hope. Thank you, Lara. Well, I must admit that last announcement was very exciting. So, because one of our questioners was, do you not have your senior membership discounts anymore? And we learned, yes, there's an individual senior discount, but I think much more excitedly for everyone who's on with us today, the chance to actually get a free pass for the year is really a, 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 a lovely contribution for MoMA to make to the people watching today. And there was a few other questions that, but I think you also answered them. Yes, everybody, the world is reopening, but we are all expected to go out with our masks, to be vaccinated, to prove our vaccination at indoor sites and facilities. Um, but you know what? There's nobody talk, listening today who hasn't already been vaccinated. So just remember to bring proof of your vaccinations with you wherever you're going in New York City, because they are gonna ask you for it if you try to go into a restaurant or a theater or a museum or a store. So you want to make sure you're ready for that also. All right, our last presenter is going, is, excuse me, Gladys Perez Mojica, the Community Relations Manager for the Theater Development Fund. 
going to talk to us about opportunities to get back to live theater. Hi, Gladys. Hi, good afternoon, Senator. I'd like to thank you, your staff, and all the attendees and presenters today. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as, as you mentioned, my name is Gladys Perez Mojica, and I am the Community Relations Manager at CDF, which stands for Theater Development Fund. We are a not-for-profit organization dedicated to bringing the power of the performing arts to everyone. And many New Yorkers know that our mission is to sustain live theater and dance by engaging and cultivating a broad and diverse audience and eliminating barriers to attendance. So as you can imagine, with Broadway and the city reopening uh, as they are, we've been pretty busy. <laughs> um, you know, we had to change a lot at TDF in terms of how we provided our programming because you know, with everything locked down and every, you know, we we're all about theater. And when there was no theater that was live, we had to pivot just like everyone else, uh, all the other presenters on this call. So in that process, we started some programs that were specifically for seniors and they've become a permanent part of our menu of offerings, which I'm happy to report. Um, last year, I told you all about our partnership with New York Foundation for Senior Citizens and Generations Connect. We started these monthly viewing events on Zoom with content that we curate, followed by facilitated conversations in English, Mandarin, and Spanish. So it's one each, right? Uh, they don't, you know, we don't speak all the languages at once. Because that would be crazy. Power of Babel and all that, right? Um, but we also started a program with Broadway HD, where we were able to provide access to the Broadway HD site free for three months for senior theater lovers who cannot or don't yet feel comfortable venturing out to see a show. And some of you might be TDF members already. And so you know that because of the lockdown, if you are, you know that because of the lockdown, we extended everyone's membership. And for those of you that don't know, TDF membership, specifically TDF membership, is a way for qualified individuals, including retired people ages 62 and over, among other eligibility categories, to access deeply discounted tickets available online and in advance for hundreds of Broadway, off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway theater shows, dance performances, and music concerts. Now, whether you're already a T TDF member already, or you have been considering membership, we would love to invite you to continue or begin at a highly discounted rate. So as part of this resource fair, and we've been doing this for a couple of years now, so you you'll be familiar if you've been here before, uh, you can get or renew your TDF membership for $20, which is a savings of 50% because it's re regularly $40, the fee. And we're back, baby. You know, I checked membership this afternoon at one o'clock and there were 147 offerings, Broadway, off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, improv, all kinds of things. And there's gonna be even more. There, there will be even more as theaters open up and as uh, venues open up. So it's very exciting. And being a member of TDF means that you're not only uh, accessing, you know, great price entertainment and live performance, but you're also supporting all of our programming, arts education, accessibility, community engagement, veterans theater going programs, autism friendly performances, and all that and more for New Yorkers of all ages, including seniors. And this is really important to know because we're all New Yorkers and the theater is for all of us. And that's we, that's what we stand for. That's our wheelhouse. So if you go to tdf.org slash join, you can use the promo code Kruger, K-R-U-E-G-E-R, -E -E for a member price of $20, which is half off. Or you can use the link in the chat, which will have the code embedded in it. So either way, you can, you can do either thing. Um, and this code will be good until next year's fair. So if you already had a membership that was extended due to the shutdown, you can use, just use this when you renew. Just put it away somewhere. It's easy peasy. And except for membership, which is for individuals, the senior specific programs, the online viewing events and the Broadway HD program that I mentioned earlier, both of those run via our community partners program. So if you are a member of a senior center or organization, you can reach out to me or you know, to my department and ask one of, uh, uh, one of us you know, to, to, to see if we can you know, create some kind of a partnership. Uh, if you're part of a senior center, you can ask one of the administrators there or uh, an organization and they can reach out to us as well. And our email is engagement at tdf.org, and that should also be in the chat for you. 
And actually, uh, it was a nice surprise that one of the organizations on this panel, Quest Lifelong Learning, is our community partner, and they've been our partner for over two years. So hi, Nan. Um, uh, participants at Quest have been able to be a part of the Broadway HD program this past year, and uh, they've also been able to see shows online that we've provided access to, you know, that have been paid shows, but that we've provided access to for free. Uh, and that's one of the just little perks of being a community partner. It includes other benefits like free shows, in addition to the senior viewing events in the Broadway HD program. So we'd love to go over those uh, benefits with new potential partners, then, you know, please, please send them our way. Again, it's free and it's open to organizations and senior centers. So uh, our email again is engagement at tdf.org. So I try to keep this short and sweet because I know that you want to see uh, something from one of our viewing events. So now we're going to see an excerpt from one of the viewing events we put on this year. This is from a Carnegie Hall concert in 1998 called My Favorite Broadway, The Leading Lady. And we thought that seeing Jennifer Holliday singing and I am telling you from Dream Girls would inspire and excite you because we sure love it. <laughs> so we hope you enjoy. Telling 
And thank you to all of you. It's a pleasure to connect with you all. And I hope to see you at a viewing event very soon. Well, thank you. You certainly picked up our energy level for the last <laughs> presentation. And I don't know about everyone else. This isn't a test because I looked it up while we were hearing. I saw Dreamgirls on Broadway in 1982, right after it first opened. And I never get tired of that song or listening to Jennifer Hudson sing pretty much whatever she wants to sing. Um, so that was a terrific reminder of everyone what it's like to go to a live concert or to a live theater event. And it is truly exciting that everything is reopening. And again, thank you so much for offering a special promo um, code for people who want to sign up. And actually, although I want to move to questions now and was going to start with ones that came in, one came in just as we were listening to um, Jennifer Hudson with the offer of the promo Sorry, code. Sorry, Jennifer Holiday. Oh She's my gosh, excuse one. me. Yeah. Jennifer Holiday. <laughs> Jennifer Hudson did the movie. <laughs> you're right, Jennifer Holiday. Um, you're right, thank you. Sure. <laughs> Does a TDF membership with our special promo code need to start now? What if I still have a TDF membership that isn't expiring yet? Can I wait and use the promo later? Yes, yes it's good for for a whole year. So okay, you can renew with it as long as you don't have auto renew set up. So if you oh. have auto renew, then it's going to renew at the regular rate. But if you turn off your auto renew, then you'll be able to renew with the code. Okay, so hopefully the person who asked that question understands about that. Uh, auto renew is throwing off my whole life nowadays because you forget all these things are signed up for and happening. Yeah. If you, and you have to yeah. remember, do you want them to or you do not want them to? Exactly. And all of a sudden you're like, $27? Why? Why? I, I don't understand. <laughs> now I'm going to ask everybody to put their, um, their turn off their mute and put themselves back on screen so that we can start with our sort of full-fledged Q&A section. Um, I do again want to thank you all. You taught us so much already. Um, so question one that came in, are any of your programs, do you think, appropriate for Alzheimer's stage one patients? So that's early dementia. I mean, obviously going out to theater events with someone seems like that's totally possible. Going to museum, I think, is totally possible. Any of the other programs? Probably not Quest. Okay. I think for University Without Walls, the answer is maybe. Um, we do have a number of programs that are staff connected. So once somebody is signed up, they would receive a phone call to connect them to the program. There would be nothing they'd have to do except be by the phone. So as long as they're, you know, comfortable getting a phone call and, um, you know, can can sit for the hour, you know, and be able to, to listen, I think it would be, you know, a very enjoyable experience and very much a possibility. And I think very similar. Uh, people can go see music, people can go to theater, you know, even with Alzheimer's stage one, they, you know, they can certainly, you, we all need to be entertained, you know, it feeds our spirit. I'm sorry, Marco, you next. Um, um, similar to Lorraine, um, all of our programs that are offered virtually are um, offered via Zoom. So there is always a dial-in number that individuals can give a call in and they can attend our classes via the telephone. Um, not all of our classes are intensive in the fact that you're learning a piece of device. A lot of them are broad knowledge. So it's open to anybody, um, even Alzheimer's early stage. I just want to clarify that the what I was talking about for University Without Walls is that people do not need to call in. Um, we do have some programs that work like that, the way people call into Zoom, they may have done it today, um, but they can actually just register and all they have to do is sit in their apartment and their phone will ring. We will call them uh, to connect them to the program. Oh, that's, that's great. It's great. great. Thank you. Okay, so the next question, apparently, I've been offered the answers to tell people because we assume nobody would necessarily know this. Can older adults take college classes at non as non matriculated students at the city college or CUNY in general. So the answer is for four year year CUNY colleges when space is available people age 60 or older can audit courses tuition free. 
no academic credit is offered and administrative fees may apply. And for two year CUNY colleges, what we call our community college, when space is available, tuition free courses are offered, students may participate fully in classes and receive academic credit, administrative fees may still apply. So if you're interested in taking, you know, courses at any CUNY school near where you live, um, you want to check in with them about how you apply and how you learn whether space is available in individual classes. Um, so it's always a good option for people um, to explore. My grandmother started college at age 90 and went to age 97. She had stopped her education at around age 14 as a young immigrant child, and she was still mad that she never got that education. So she went back to college starting then and had a fabulous seven years of taking classes and lived to 100. So it worked for her. OK, what services does older adult technology provide individuals who are 66 and older and would come to and would they come to my apartment to help with laptop and desktop issues? Does anybody go to people's apartments? So prior to the pandemic, when we did have in-person programming, we still did not do home bound programs. We did not go into people's homes, but um, that's something that, um, you know, because of the pandemic, we haven't explored further about the possibility. But so in short, no, we have never done that and we don't envision it. Got it. Thank you. The tech coaching program at Derote does uh, go into people's homes right now. That's on pause, um, you know, due to safety concerns for COVID. But that is the original model. Um, we're not in competition with Oats. They they do a whole range of programming that we never even touch. Um, but in terms of that one on one support coming to somebody's home, um, that is definitely something that that Derote can help someone with as soon as we sort of clear this COVID hurdle. Got it. And I'm not sure about during COVID and I'm not marketing for anyone, but there are private companies that come into your home to set up computers or fix computers um, or help you with some, you know, how you get started with these. But again, they do charge and I'm not sure which companies are doing it during COVID, but there are those options possibly. I still need, I'm still in need of computer technology and I still want to write my memoir. Well, that's nice. I don't know whether that's a question or just a statement. Um, so again, if you need computer technology help, we have a couple of organizations here, but they're not coming to your home. You have to um, mostly get in touch with them in other ways. And hopefully soon we'll also not only start to be going out to everywhere, but there are a number of senior centers that have computer training in my in my district. And hopefully those centers will soon be more fully open and perhaps the computer training at those sites will start up again. You just have to keep watching and seeing. Where can seniors share their aging experiences conversationally so to discover how others may have handled issues and problems we're all facing. We're all problem solvers for someone else if given the chance to share. Ah, well, that sounds a little bit like Quest is doing on the educational level. People get together and they plan classes together and they talk together and they go out to exotic dinners together. Um, I would also, again, when our senior centers are reopened fully, I think they're only at 25% participation now. Um, senior centers are amazing places to sit and chat with others about their lives and their activities um, and can learn from each other. Um, a number of our religious institutions, I'm not saying anybody needs to be religious or any particular religion, but quite a few religious institutions have been sponsoring specific programs um, for people of certain age categories. And almost 
support group type models that I know that they find that particularly in this difficult time that people needing to come together and hear other people's experiences and share experiences and frankly share sometimes how we're lonely and afraid because it's been scary and we're spending a lot more time alone. So you also might just want to check with your neighborhood religious institution. And I'm not sure anybody really cares whether you're a member or not, or even the particular religion that that church or synagogue is. So I might suggest that other ideas people have. Senior Planet has a multitude of discussion groups that we offer, not just our creative creations discussion group, but we have many different discussion groups that are open to anybody to join. And there's different topics each week that um, if you go on our website, you can, um, there, it's an outlet for people to share, um, you know, information and talk. Um, so Senior Planet is an outlet for that type of stuff. Great. Yeah, Jerote also offers numbers of different discussion groups. Um, and while many of them have a, a wide range of topics, um, we actually just completed um, and will re-offer a program specifically on solo aging. So, you know, there's, there's coming together with your peers to just enjoy each other's company and a topic of common interest. And then there's coming together with your peers to talk about the aging experience and how you might be impacted and what resources you can bring to bear on that. Um, so both of those options are, are available at Jerote and specifically the one on solo aging for, for people who are kind of going through this, you know, this wonderful period of their lives, but somewhat independently and, and looking to figure out how all of that will work for them. And Liz, you mentioned um, Quest. And yes, in addition to just situations for people to discuss informally the issues we're all facing as we as we age, there are also some if not complete courses, things like a noontime knowledge where at lunchtime somebody will present, for example, we've had a couple on hearing issues, which many of our members are beginning to face and so forth. So that's another opportunity at Quest. Yeah. Great. Um, actually, my office also puts together um, monthly bulletins of free activities around the city that are available and that's online and probably somebody can type into chat where it is on my website. And frankly, a lot of those activities are places where you might run into other people um, who want to just sit and chat about specific issues um, or the issues that are concerning you. All right, does anybody know about free art classes or crafts workshops for those of us who are desiring to learn to express ourselves. And did MoMA talk about some kind of arts classes in your chat? Yeah, um, thank you, Senator Kruger. So um, through MoMA, we've been offering free art making classes um, through partnership organizations. So um, one of the organizations I mentioned, which I know is in your district, Senator Kruger, is Lenox Hill Neighborhood House. Um, so we have partnered with them to offer free art making classes to their participants and clients. Um, we've partnered with um, Marco at Senior Planet um, and Oats to offer an art making workshop. And so we, we aren't able to offer these to the, the public per se for individuals to register on their own, but we are happy to work with community organizations and if you're part of a community organization and you don't have an art making workshop and would like to um, think about partnering with us at MoMA, um, you can email me at primetime@moma.org, which I can put into the chat and I'd be happy to explore that with the organization. Great. And my staff have notified me what I should have known is that we actually had suspended doing the in-person list every month because of COVID, but we're planning to restart that list shortly. So check again shortly with us. Thank you, staff. Um, and again, we only have, you know, certain numbers of people on today's presentation, but just remember we have a lot of museums in my district and quite a few of them might be offering different arts programming um, or classes that people find interesting and all of them needed to be figure out how to be creative during the period of COVID and to 
I was told that some museums who never even imagined doing an online anything were setting up whole online programs for themselves. Um, so again, if you live in my district, you know there are a lot of museums here and you should check them out because they probably all are offering different kinds of programs. Also, somebody typed in that Hunter College has a senior citizen auditors specific program with a website attached. And again, we believe that most of the CUNY schools are actually have programs. I just move my screen a little bit so I can get to the questions on the chat. Um, second. Oh, does anybody define senior in any specific way? Are there programs that are eligible for 60 and up, or is it 65 and up? Do any of you have cutoffs of one or the other? No. You do not. Does OATS have a cutoff of, it has to be 65 and up, or 60 and up is okay? OATS is 60 and up, 60 plus. Okay. okay. The road is also 60. 60, okay. Anybody else? Larry, I'm trying to Prime time at MoMA is 65 plus, um, but I've been known to make many exceptions for people who still want to join. Okay. And how about you, Gladys, with TDF? Any? Well, with TDF, for membership, uh, you can fill any of the eligibility categories, which I can drop in the chat. Um, and you can also um, uh, community partner members like, you know, people from that, those organizations that are community partners, they're also eligible as community partner members. So I just dropped it in the chat, full-time students, full-time teachers, you know, so however, if, if anyone fits these, they're eligible for membership. Great, mm -hmm. great. Thank you. Sure. Um, oops. Oh, uh, let's see. Lara, that senior day specifically mm -hmm. that you were referencing, is there a specific day of each week or month that it is, or does it is it random? Um, it has not been planned yet, but as soon as I have the date set, I will be sending out a save the date through um, through our e newsletter. And um, Brad, thank you so much for sharing the link to sign up for that e newsletter in the chat. It will be sometime this winter, and then I hope to offer it seasonally. Great, great. I'm just running through the chat questions to make sure I think that I've picked up all of them. Um, yes, so I actually then want to thank all of our presenters for giving us, I think, really just a taste of the number of opportunities there are out there in our great city um, for seniors when it comes to education, furthering their education, the arts and technology. And let's not forget, that's why everybody's always loved aging in place in New York City, because we have all these amazing opportunities. And some of us were, you know, we went off our plans for a while because of COVID. And some people have discovered that actually virtually is a very good way to participate in lots of kinds of programming. So I'm pretty sure it's not going away anytime soon, even though of course we want everything to be reopened. And maybe it's my bias, but you know, live shows, live music, some things you just really, really wanna do in person. Um, not to mention, we wanna support our incredible artists who have also been struggling without opportunities to perform for us for almost two years. So we want to make sure that we're going back to seeing live music and art and dance and taking advantage of, frankly, probably a whole new generation of performers who've been out there getting ready and practicing for us. So I'm definitely a strong believer in that and getting back to our museums. Again, these are the reasons the whole world keeps wanting to come back to New York City and visit us, and we want to be there for them. So I'm going to now thank everyone for their participation. Um, I'm going to remind you that this is the end of our 
resource fair, which bro broke out into three days this year, um, and that the senior resource guide has been updated for the 21-22 edition with new expanded sections on resources for aging in place, healthcare, food benefits, assistance, transportation, and many other topics. And you can either look at the guide online um, on my website, or you can actually request a hard copy of the resource guide um, by filling out a form online or calling my office 212-490-9535. Um, the hard copies will be available very soon and we'll get them out to you if you've requested them. And we're really hoping that next year we will be back in person at Temple Emmanuel in October 2022. But this is not the end of programming of my office because we just keep going from activity to activity. So I want to remind you that my next event is scheduled for Thursday, October 28th from 7 to 8 30 in the evening and this will be a trainer a training on what's called bystander training we're co-sponsoring it with the new york city commission on human rights and the commission staff will offer tools and strategies to help us safely respond when we witness bias incidents and discrimination because the truth is we are in this huge city all trying to live together in peace, but sometimes bad things happen. And you're standing right there and you're just not sure, what are you supposed to be doing? So thank you, Human Rights Commission, who recognizes that a lot of us actually just need some help to understand what are the right steps to do without putting ourselves in a safety situation or expanding the, the violence. So, I hope that you will tune in on Thursday, October 28th, because I think it's going to be a very different kind of presentation that I know I'm personally looking forward to learning a great deal from. So again, thank you to all my guests. Thank you to my amazing staff, who without I could never do any of this. And have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.